Welcome in hockey fans in the desert southwest, Sun Devil hockey fans. I got Coach Greg Powers with me for the final regular season five-minute Powers play. I say final regular season because we all know what's uh, ahead or we hope what's ahead, but Coach, tell me a little bit about this last weekend at Wisconsin and, and what your team took away from it or maybe didn't want to take away from it. Look, we, we you know, the, and what I told the guys after the game on Saturday was, was this weekend absolutely does not define our program or our season. Um, we don't have anything to apologize for by going in and not beating a team with 14 draft picks and four first rounders in front of 12,000 other fans. It, we were up against it. And, and in our guys' defense, they emptied the tank on Friday. You know, it, it, it was a weird back and forth kind of last shot win type game. Um, and that's what happened, the last shot won. Yep. Um, but we played really well in, very, in, in almost every facet. We dominated the faceoff. We had more puck possession, five on five, uh, more scoring chances, five on five, had two power play goals. We, we shut down their power play on the kill. We controlled a lot of that game and how we want to manage games. They just scored seven goals somehow, you know, and, and, and they did it because they're so talented. So the emotions of, of a game like that on the road at the end of a 13-week stretch where we had no breaks, our guys were out of gas Saturday, and, and, and the 12,000 people in the building and the 150 alumni for Wisconsin gave that team the energy they needed to come out and knock us in our teeth, and we just didn't have um, anything left to, to, to really get out of it, you know, and, and it was really unfortunate. We dumped everything we had into Friday. It didn't work out, um, but... Um, at the end of the day, it's what I told the guys after the, the game on Saturday. It's how proud I was of them. We, we believe in our hearts. We had a better regular season this year than last. We had a 13-week stretch where we played 26 games with no break. We traveled over literally 26,000 air miles, and we went 16, 7, and 3. We don't have to apologize for anything. And, and uh, if, if people want to criticize that, I don't know what, we, what else really we can do. You know, I mean, it... It's, uh, it was a great year, and I'm incredibly proud of our players. You know, and you kind of led me into that. When I looked at what was happening in Wisconsin, I was going like, oh, my God, they're having their alumni weekend, their senior weekend, all this talent. You really did have it up against you. But it kind of looked a little bit like Groundhog Day because you, you had the same thing in Minnesota last year, except Minnesota had a different momentum. They were, they, I think they were just trying to oust you more than anything. But yeah. your thoughts on the two weekends and any comparison? I don't, I don't think there's really any. I mean, we went into last year in Minnesota um, – knowing we were 100% lock, right? Yeah. And we had Walker out, we had guys sick. We, we knew going into that weekend as a staff, it was gonna be you know, a long weekend. And, and the, the big ice, our guys got frustrated. They took penalties we didn't like. This weekend, we, you know, we, it was a good game. It was a fun game on Friday. And we ended up losing by a goal with a minute left. We had a lead with 10 minutes left in the third. It's a drastically different weekend. Saturday maybe was a little bit more like it. With some of the penalties and and you know the unfortunate circumstance with with Semic, um, but uh, but no, we, we don't look at that. Um, the two weekends correlate at all. Um, it, you know, it, it it's it, it does not take away from the body of work that, that we have this season, and, and we're really proud of our body of work. So as we sit right here, February 27th, you guys are 13th in the pairwise. A lot can happen, both up and down. But as you look at the roster, the regular season schedule, I should say, uh, what's your gut tell you? Does your gut tell you you're going to move up, down, stay where you're at? Yeah, I mean, we, we feel really good about our chances, you know. Um, we've evaluated it every way from Sunday, you know. And, and like you said, we, we could move up. We right. could be as high as 11, maybe even 10 after this weekend, and we could move down. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, we just have to stay patient, and usually it will balance itself out after league playoffs and everything that goes into the equation. Um, but we know that, that as of today, there, there's a 93% chance that, that we're in. Yep. Um, I'll take those odds. That's, that's good. I think if, if you would have told us, Five years ago when we started the program, we were going to be, had a 93% chance to go back to back um, in our fourth full season to the tournament. I'd take it. I'd yeah. take it all day. Um, and, uh, and we're just planning. We're planning the month like we're in and like we're going to play. Um, there's no other way to go about it or approach it. We're staying positive and, and the guys' attitudes are really good. And, and I think that, that once you know, the dust kind of settled, they, they know they had a really good year. 
Okay, speaking of really good years, you got four guys that had more than 30 points. You got one guy that had 40 points. You had Johnny Walker back up another 20 goal season with 20 goals. He, he looked down the list and it's like, you guys were uh, offensively improved, is <laughs> kind of an understatement. Your defensive core put the puck in the net at a uh, record pace. You got one more win than last year. Um, you got to look at this as a complete success, right? 100%. I mean, it's. We're in our fourth full season as a program, and, and, and we had the fifth leading goal scorer in the country in James Sanchez. Yeah. We had, what, the, the fourth leading goal scorer in the country in Johnny Walker. We had um, the highest scoring decor in the country uh, in all of NCAA yeah. hockey. We were the only program with, with four players over 30 points. We were 10th in the country in, in, in team offense. Um, and we we're, we're, I think, 12th in the country in, in goal differential. Um, so many statistics to be proud of. 10th in the country in penalty kill. Um, you know, we got the power play up from previous years to right under 20%. So that's trending in the right direction. Combined special teams close to top 10 in the country. We did a lot of good things and have a lot to be proud of. A lot of great wins. Um, it was a good regular season for us. And, 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 and it's one that we... Are going to parlay and 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 have a, a fun month to to prepare and 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 go in like we're we're going to go in to win. You know, I had a chance last uh, week to visit. Well, you were at your meeting with uh, Riley Simpson and and just looking at that kid and knowing what he went through and where he's at right now and how proud he is to be a student coach. Tell me about Riley Simpson. We didn't really get a chance to talk much about him. I know you've talked about it, but tell us once again how much Riley Simpson means to this program. Well, he's, I mean, there's not many kids that we would, we would transition immediately from being a player to a coach because of, of what goes on a coach's room. And there's conversations and decision making processes that, um, a lot of people don't need to be privy to. Right. But Riley was, it was a kid that we knew could handle it. He knew he could set cause he still lives with players, <laughs> and, and, and he, but he could separate the two and he's a kid that we could trust. And he's a kid that because of how smart he is, um, and mature he is, he's a kid that could add value to, to what those decisions looked like and why we made them and, and what maybe we were missing. His value has been immeasurable. Um, and he's only going to get better and better. I think next year when his class cycles out, he'll be even more of a, of a coach, so yeah. to speak. And, because he's going to come back and, and get his graduate degree, which we're incredibly thrilled that, that we're going to have him for another year um, and uh, build up his resume, and then we'll see what happens after that. But um, unbelievable kid, and uh, there's not a thing any of us wouldn't do for him. Okay, a little bit off of your topic, but the CCHA announced they're making a comeback, and, of course, everybody throws ASU in there. What does ASU want to do? Do they want to be a part of this? Just your overall thoughts on on that conference coming back and the three schools that are kind of left hanging in the wind, if you will? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's unfortunate for those three schools. They're three schools that we have really good relationships with, that we play regularly. Um, so we're going to continue to support those three schools and play them and help them fill out their schedules, travel to those three schools. Um, and uh, and that, that, that's something that I for sure can comment on. Those schools, you know, they, they had the seven schools had to do what they had to do, I guess. And, and, and we respect that as well. And, um, you know, they, they, they historically have been in what you would consider, you know, a bus league. Yeah. And, and, and budgets and um, wear and tear and travel and all that stuff goes into consideration. I don't think that they had any uh, malcontent with, with the decision that they made. They did it in the best interest of their own programs, and, and uh, we respect that too. Um, and, uh, you know, now that the regular season's over, the conference affiliation is, is numero uno on our list in, in every way, and it's something that's discussed internally every day, and conversations externally have, have begun, and, and uh, we'll figure that out as we uh, kind of continue on. You know, you and I sat four and a half years ago, five years ago on your couch. I still remember the conversation when I asked you about, you're starting an NCAA program. What are you going to do? And you told me we're going to be big, strong, and old. And that first year, you were big, strong, and old. And as you look back at it now, are you on that trajectory that you thought you would be on, that you planned to be on, transitioning to where you are right now? 
I mean, me, yes. You know, I think we've exceeded everybody's expectations on the outside, but I, I never had a doubt that we could do what we're doing. Um, and uh, a lot of people thought we, we could never, we would never be. It would take 15 years to be this successful. Um, but we, we stuck with the plan. We had a plan, and, and we're still old, and we're still big, and we're still tough to play against. Um, we're just bringing in some more, you know, high-end talent every year, and, and we're going to announce our recruiting class this week and couldn't be more excited about it. It's, it's going to be a, a, a class that, that has the opportunity to, to really be a, an immediate difference maker in every way, and, um, you know, we're going to miss our seniors, but uh, we're excited about the future. You know, when I look at your class coming in next year, not only the freshman class, but I'm talking about the junior class that are going to be seniors, assuming that everybody comes back. Could you imagine getting an impact from James Sanchez, Willie Neerum, guys like that that just came into the program and fit right in, and not only fit right in, but excelled? Yeah, I mean, right now we, we expect um, no early departures or early signs. You know, I mean, it, you never know what can happen over the next month and after the tournament, but you know we're anticipating we're going to have those juniors back and, and, and any sophomore that might have an opportunity back. So um, right now, you know, we're, we're in a situation where the plan is the plan for the departing seniors, and we're excited about that. You know, I mean, it, it, what we return next year outside of our senior class, which by no means is is is. Um, I mean, it, 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 those guys are major contributors, but we, you know, we believe we're going to take another step. We really do. Okay, we'll end it on two, two things. First of all, everybody asks, how in the world can you do this? How can you win so many games with only one NHL draft pick on your roster when you look at what you went up against against Wisconsin? And, and even Demetrius wasn't Demetrius and wasn't in the lineup for the whole second half of the season, basically. Yeah. And you still did it. So, number one, how do you do that? And number two, is it important to you to get more draft picks? No, it, it doesn't. It, we, no. When we recruit kids, we don't, we don't care if they're drafted. We recruit kids with our own eyes, um, our own evaluation, um, and, and, and we trust ourselves. We don't get caught up in um, stars and, and rankings and what other people think about kids and what other people think about players we, we you know we have a tremendously talented staff and Alex and Mike that are really good at evaluating kids and and so we trust ourselves and, that, and that's why we're in this position um, you know we have a, a roster full of, of, of free agents yeah. that are gonna they're, they're getting a lot of looks yeah. you know and and uh, I think that speaks volumes to not only how our, our staff evaluates and recruits and scouts but then once they get here, what we do with them and, and how we continue to, to approach, um, you know, development and, and, and making sure that get, guys are getting better every day. So we have a good thing going here. Um, you know, we do have two draft picks coming in as a part of next year's class. They're not coming in because they're drafted. They're coming in because we think they're really good players. And one of them, Cole Brady, was was committed to us before he got drafted. So, um, so you know, it, I think that'll evolve as we grow. You'll see more logos on our lineup sheet, but it'll never drive us ever. Okay. Final question is always the one I ask you at the end of the year: building status. Do we know anything new and exciting? Anything that we can even hint at yet? Um, Nothing uh, I can get into the granular details, but, but I, what I can tell you is that um, I anticipate this being the most exciting offseason in the history of our program. So, in your words, conference is, is first and foremost, right? That's what you really want to accomplish, even more than a building? Would that be fair? Um, well, th that's more my control, right? I mean, right. it's not ultimately, it's Ray's decision what conference we join, and, 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 but, but, you know, it, it's... It's more in my scope of the day to day where where you know I'm going to be leaned on for um, conversations and 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 guidance as to where we go from a conference affiliation standpoint. The building's completely out of my control, so I control what I can control, and I focus on what I can focus on. Um, and, and for me, that that's that's you know after the tournament, um, priority number one of of uh, of my focus. How realistic is that, or how soon would you say that would be a possibility that you guys would be in a conference? Or certainly not next year, right? You're going to be independent next year. Yeah, and I would say independent for probably two more years. Um, you know, and, and in a perfect world, maybe in three years we'll be in a league. But uh, we have a great schedule next year, a great schedule the year after. 
you know, we're getting into NCAA tournaments. We're recruiting well. Um, recruits do like the independent schedule. They like the, 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 the you know, um, just the flexibility that we have. Um, sometimes it, it doesn't it doesn't play into your best interest with playing 13 straight weeks, but um, <laughs> but it is what it is. We're right? still in a great place. We're still in a great place, and we're excited to tackle this month and and do some creative things to get the guys ready. Because there's maroon and gold behind you, I'll let you end it on uh, where I'm going Friday night down to the old Pueblo to see ASU try to take that Cactus Cup back. Uh, give me your thoughts on this weekend and maybe a memory from what you remember most about a battle with uh, the University of Arizona. We had a lot of battles, both as a player and, and as a coach. And, um, you know, Chad's done a great job down there. You know, I'm, I'm happy for him. And they've had a good year. And, and I'm really proud of Tate and Jim and, and that team over there. They, they, they're in a great position where they control their destiny. You know, they go into the final weekend um, and they have to get a win. They have to go down to Tucson and get one win to, to get the cup back. Um, that was created, you know, when I was running that program and it's something I'm really proud of. We never lost it to them um, or even came, I don't think we ever lost a game to them. We also won, but, um, but uh, so, so I'm really proud of that, of that trophy and hopefully it comes back to where it belongs. And, and then even more importantly, I think that you know, a win down there seals a bid for them to get back to the national tournament. And, and that uh, is also something to be really proud of. Coach, I appreciate your time as always. I know it's going to be a busy four weeks, even though there's no games to be played, but we'll, uh, we'll keep watching the pairwise. I told everybody on the podcast. That's not true. Oh, oh, oh. It's not true. There is. That's not true. Something's breaking. I, I, I'm not going to give you the details, but next week you'll, you'll, you'll hear about a game that will be played. Exciting, exciting news, Coach. You heard it first right here, folks, and, and like I told everybody uh, on the podcast last night, I said, don't uh, – don't pay attention to the pairwise until we're close to Selection Sunday because it's going to fluctuate yeah. up and down. That's what I told the players. Just, just, just stay, stay positive, stay patient. There's going to be a roller coaster of emotions. Just, let's just enjoy our month and, and get ready to play. All right, Coach. Thanks. Have a good week. Thank you.